So last week we had a look at a single model of motor and what changing the voltage in KV we run it at means in terms of where and how much we gain in performance. But it's much more interesting to look at different motors from different manufacturers with different stator sizes because the differences in performances are actually a lot more varied and perhaps not as straightforward as you might think. So we're starting off with the same chart that we uh, left off with last week where we have the 100% throttle traces um, of the dyno of a number of motors. I have all of the 13, 14, and 17 millimeter motors that I have um, around to test that range from the fairly modern Tornado T1 uh, to uh, something like the DYS uh, 4000 KV 1306, which is a much older design. And then I have a bunch of uh, example torque curves of some common props. Similar ones that we had last time, we have our Raystar 3035 uh, as an example of a heavy, a heavy three inch prop, our Rotorex 3040 and 3044, and a couple of Racecraft, the 3054 and the 3076 is kind of our uh, mid-load, uh, mid heavy three inch build sort of props. Uh, and then I also have some example traces from some even lighter props, like the old-fashioned 3020 by blade the Rotorex 2535 by 4 and the Gemfan 2035. Now, of course, these smaller props are meant for a smaller class of motor, and they don't, they're for T-mount, uh, and they wouldn't actually fit on any of these motors, but we can look at them as an example of a lighter load. If you did have a five millimeter uh, shafted version of these props, this is how they would behave on these motors. So let's start out just narrowing it down to only the 1306 motors. These two traces are for the DYS 1306 4000 KV and the Emax 1306 4000 KV. The DYS motor is this trace here. So you see we're getting uh, actually higher RPM at lower loads, and then it tails off um, a lot more under heavy loads. And the Emax trace looks to have a, a much stronger motor overall, because although we're not getting quite the same uh, unloaded RPM out of it, it is not suffering nearly as badly uh, as the load increases. So you have an interesting situation where, of course, these two um, traces, unlike in the uh, the Tornado T1, when we were looking at all of the versions of that, uh, all of the traces uh, tended to just extend out from each other as you went up in KV or up in voltage. Um, your 100% throttle just pushed further and further afield. On this one, there are actually situations where uh, one motor is better than the other and where that relationship flops. So as it happens at this point right here, if you had a prop load that was crossing over this point, both of these motors actually would perform um, pretty much the same, at least as far as what RPM and thrust, peak thrust you're going to get out of it at full throttle. And you can see that for any prop that has a lower load, um, motor loading than that, so all of, basically all of the three inch props uh, on this on this lineup, so all of the uh, the Racecraft and the uh, the Rotorex uh, three inch tri blades and all of the lighter ones as well, that that weaker uh, DYS motor actually would give you more RPM and thus more thrust. So the true KV of this motor is probably uh, not uh, not matching uh, exactly uh, what's on the nameplate. Either this DYS motor is slightly higher KV uh, than it's marked, or the Emax might be slightly lower KV. But although the Emax doesn't drop off in uh, in RPM as much as torque increases, it just is not starting at as high a place. And so, um, for very uh, light prop loads, actually the uh, the DYS motor uh, would be superior. But of course, as soon as you cross above that point, anything that has a heavier loads like that uh, larger uh, Raystar prop, or if you can imagine, like if these are, these are your kind of uh, two, two and three inch light, and then three inch medium and a three inch heavy, four inch is going to start coming in around here somewhere as well. And is five inch uh, too. As you start looking at a, a heavy, very heavy three inch and four inch load, that Emacs start looking a lot more appealing. And uh, we'll take a look at the efficiency a little later, but you can see that the efficiency of the motor 
um, at this point is also much, much higher than the DYS, where the DYS is falling off in efficiency significantly uh, as it's loaded down more and the Emacs is uh, holding its own. But you can definitely see the situations where you may have two motors and uh, if you put one prop on them, they'll actually perform very similarly. And if you put a different prop on them, the motors won't perform the same, even though one of them is, uh, you might say, more powerful or stronger than the other. Just because you have a stronger motor doesn't mean for all potential workloads uh, that it's going to give you better, higher thrust. The other thing to keep in mind with this chart is that both of these tests are done here on 3S. So if we increase the voltage, uh, on these motors, the uh, the peak loading is going to increase. And since the DYS is already struggling uh, at the high loading on 3S, if we increase that to 4S, it's going to struggle even more because we're already running out of torque, where the Emacs is going to handle higher voltages much better. So in that case, this crossover point of uh, full throttle uh, performance is going to slip down further uh, down the uh, torque curve and the Emacs is going to be the better motor choice over a larger portion of uh, prop loads uh, than the DYS. So now let's toggle on the uh, 14 millimeter and larger motors. On these bottom two we have the RCX 1407 3800 kV and the Tornado T1 1407 3600 kV. The RCX motor is this uh, lower trace uh, here, or at least the uh, lower in peak value. And we have kind of a similar thing going on between these two motors as well. There's a crossover point that just happens to be uh, right near where this uh, 3044 uh, torque load uh, crosses over. And the older design, 1407 3800 kV is not handling increased loads. Now these, these are loads we're not seeing on the props. On, on these props that we're looking at, as the load increases, uh, the torque is falling off and uh, any load, any loading significantly above that, uh, that 14, that RCX motor is not going to give you nearly as much uh, thrust as the Tornado T1 3600. But for very light loading, because that RCX uh, 1407 has slightly higher KV, we're getting higher RPM out of it. So as long as we're not loading it down past kind of the torque that the uh, the rest of the build is capable of, we actually will get better RPM and better thrust out of that older, weaker 3800 KV compared to the T1 3600 KV. And the difference in loading on that uh, much newer uh, Tornado T1, like you can just see how dramatic that can be. At very high levels of loading, we're getting significantly more torque than we uh, could out of the older design. So while at low loading, this motor isn't matching the performance of these two, if we did have a higher KV, then our starting RPM would be higher and we would similarly not lose as much RPM as well. And so if we had another couple hundred KV on this motor, you could easily uh, blow past any performance uh, point that you can get on that RCX 1407 with the Tornado T1 1407. So that's most of the options. The two motors that we have left are the Tornado T1 1407 4100 kV and the RCX 1707 3900 kV. Now these two are the ones at the top and which one do you think is which? Given what we've seen on the uh, earlier pairs of motors, which trace do you think is the one that's higher up? Do you think that the slightly higher 4100 kV of the Tornado 1407 is giving us more torque at, at higher RPM? Or is the 1707 3900 kV the one that's winning out between these two? The stator size between these two is really quite large. As it turns out, in this case, the RCX 1707 is generally the lower trace of these two. This is a much larger stator, but it's an older motor with a older design, so it doesn't have all the benefits of the newer design of the Tornado series. So while it has a much larger stator, which should give it a lot more torque to work with, uh, the, the much smaller stator of the 1407 and a little extra KV to compensate for that is giving us a lot higher performance um, in most ranges uh, that we would use on this motor. But of course, there is a crossover point just like these uh, earlier ones. And the 1707 
uh, anywhere past above this load is still making a lot more torque where the uh, 1407 is really seriously starting to drop off. So you can get the impression that uh, this 1407 motor design doesn't have a lot left in it. As you increase the, the loading even more, increasing the KV or the voltage, um, we're going to see just more and more drop off um, as that uh, peak loading increases, but the 1707 still is holding very strongly, has a very um, sharp incline to it here. It's not dropping off. And so this motor is going to handle higher voltages and higher KV a lot better than the smaller uh, stator of the Tornado T1. And certainly we can assume if you uh, compare the RCX 1407, an older style uh, 3800 kV 1407 with the Tornado T1 4100 kV, a little closer in kV, there's a huge gap in performance there. And if we had a newer design of this 1707, we can expect that its performance would likewise be significantly increased over the, uh, the 1407. Right now, uh, it happens to be uh, competing very closely with. So as an overall picture, you can kind of see where these uh, 1306 motors, the, you have like a rough class delineation. It's not super clear cut where you can separate all of the stator sizes from each other. The 1306 are actually fairly close to the lower end of the 1407s. The 1707 is mixed right there in the middle where the 1407s are. And some of these particular builds of motors are certainly... Um, more suited for lower loads than higher ones, um, giving more RPM, even though they may make less uh, torque on under high load. But if you're not using the torque, it doesn't do you any good to have it.